When it comes to CPU cooling nowadays, you have a lot of options out there, ranging all the way from the Hyper 212 Evo, all the way up to something like this. This is an Arctic 240 liquid cooler from Arctic Cooling, and this is a Corsair H100i GTX. These two coolers are at the same price range of around $100, but both offer very different things. Which of these coolers comes out on top? Let's find out. Alright guys, so these two coolers have been put to the test with my i7-5820K at 4.4 GHz with a voltage of 1.295 volts. One thing I want to mention is that my i7-5820K is a heat producing monster. For some reason it produces so much heat and from what I've read about on forums and hearing from other people, that that's just how this processor works. It's a Hazel E processor with the 6 cores, 12 threads, it just produces a lot of heat. There's a lot of surface area for this thing to produce heat and well. I'll I was going to put these coolers up to the test. Keep in mind that this is a worst case scenario for both of these coolers. These coolers are going to be put to hell with this i7-5820K and the temperatures are going to express that because my case, which is a Silent Base 600, is a silent optimized case and really doesn't have the best airflow in the world because it is more targeted for people who want a silent gaming PC. One thing I want to also mention is I'm using everything that's included in this box. When it comes to the Arctic cooler right here, I'm using the included thermal paste which is Arctic MX4 and the pre-applied thermal paste with H100i which is a brand new straight out of the box cooler. So the main reason I'm doing this is because these come in at the same price tag of about $100 with the H100i coming in at $106 and I want to be able to get an out of the box put in your PC experience and test them to see what they have. Now I know this might be unfair in certain reasons and that the H100i will probably perform better without its thermal paste compound but in this video I just want to test right out of the box what do you get if you just plug and play and go what do you have as far as performance goes and I think that's the best way to test these two coolers because they're at the same price tag and the same thing goes with the Arctic 240 having four fans instead of two fans we're gonna use all four fans instead of the two fans built in with H100i and we're just gonna go with it and see what kind of performance numbers we get so without further ado let's get right into the testing so my testing methodology is as follows so we're gonna be doing a gaming load test which I'm gonna be playing overwatch for about an hour and get the average temperatures when playing overwatch Next, we're going to be doing an IDA 64 stress test, which I'm going to run for 15 minutes, and then I'm going to get you a minimum temperature and a maximum temperature, which gives you a good idea of how well these coolers perform when their CPUs are under full load. So without further ado, let's get right into the benchmark results. First up is the Arctic 240 Liquid Freezer. Now this cooler comes in at a price tag of $99, and I'm running the four fan configuration in a push-pull fashion. This liquid cooler did perform very admirably from what I've seen in the benchmarks, with an ambient temperature of the room being 22 degrees Celsius, under gaming load, we were getting low temps around 60 degrees Celsius and maximum temps of about 76 degrees Celsius, which in Overwatch, being a highly CPU demanding game, is pretty impressive. And then things got really bad. When running Ida 64 for only about 10 minutes, we started to hit temperatures near 9500 degrees Celsius, which is very uncomfortable temperatures for me and really is a temperature you should never let your CPU hit at all. So I had to cut the test off early and it totally brings back one of my points here is that this is a very big stress scenario for everybody involved because they're put in a very bad scenario. This case is not good for airflow. This is a very demanding situation and we're gonna get the best out of these coolers. Now onto the next cooler, the Corsair H100i V2 GTX, which comes in at a price tag of $106 on Amazon. This cooler comes with just two fans, so I configured it in a push configuration with the fans on the top exhausting out of the case, which is the best for dust management, and a lot of people out there recommend you do it that way, so that's the best way I have it configured. The ambient temperature in the room, again, was about 22 degrees Celsius, give or take, and under gaming load, we were getting a minimum temperature of about 65 degrees Celsius and a maximum temperature of about 78 degrees Celsius. So it did perform a little bit worse than the Arctic 240 in the minimum temperature department, getting upwards of about 65 degrees Celsius, and the maximum did perform a little bit worse. So overall, right now, as far as gaming goes, this cooler is behind the Arctic 240. But then we get into Ida 64, which the minimum temperatures are about 80 degrees Celsius and the maximum temperatures are about 97 degrees Celsius, which again, is underperforming compared to the Arctic Cooler 240 over here. So what does this all mean? Well, Corsair H100i was a cooler that everyone goes after for cooling their CPUs. The best all-in-one liquid cooling loop that seems to be out there, the companies like NZXT and Cooler Master being around, Corsair has been known to deliver really, really good all-in-one cooling solutions. But the thing is, 
This thing right here is pretty much getting replaced by the Arctic 240 liquid freezer. This cooler for $99 compared to $106, which I've actually seen this Corsair H100i GTX in Best Buy for $140. It's getting phased out by this budget option. This thing offers four fans, better thermal paste compound included, and a more flexible tubing that I really, really love, and gives a very compelling offer for people out there who want to just spend $100 base and get right into overclocking their chips by slapping this bad boy on it. This is a really awesome cooler. I highly recommend it. The Corsair H100i is not a bad cooler at all. If I probably slapped two more fans on there, it'd probably be on par with this cooler, but that is at a cost compared to what you're getting with this cooler right here. So Arctic, you did a really good job. And thank you for sending this review sample. And thank you for Corsair for, you know, competing in this battle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment what you think. If you want me to do more of these types of videos, please comment down below with what kind of coolers you want me to try out. And if you have any questions about my testing methodology, please leave it down below as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video once again. Be sure to check out all our social media links down below. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.